We'll see you flip flops and clown pants. <laughs> Even a few in girls. <laughs> and sad but true, that's the way most of the churches are appearing when it comes to being the bride of Christ. Now let's look at something that um, you know Jesus is all compared, always compared the church as his bride. And if we look at kind of the way a wedding is put together, we'll see why that he's calling her a bride. Why he considers the church as his bride. First thing that happens is maybe the father said, okay, this guy down the street's kind of rich looking. Maybe we can see we could strike a deal. Our daughter's coming up on marrying age and maybe we can talk him into it. Whatever the case, most of the time it was a deal that was worked out between the parents. Back according to Jewish custom. And once they worked out a deal, then they called it a betrothal. It was maybe like uh, what we call an engagement. The big difference is, is this girl was pledged to be married to this guy. And that's all it was. But that pledge was as fine in a contract as anything that was ever written on paper. They agreed. And their word was it. Now this betrothal came with dowries. So during this time of engagement or betrothal, here is the future groom as you're trying to gather up as best he can to come up with whatever he had to trade off for this bride, for this dowry. And uh, let's just use cows for an example. My daughter is worth 10 cows. Oh, I don't think she's worth but eight. Okay, bring me eight cows. Well, so the groom goes out and he works and he earns eight cows. And he comes over and he pays us dowry. Then the wedding progresses into a um, march. The wedding, or the groom sends out a messenger announcing to all the friends that we're getting ready to have the feast. And uh, so along the way, people gathered up, friends, family, they all go to the bride's house. And then it's party time. And here's the problem. Sometimes the family wasn't real rich, so they only had a feast for two days. The more common thing was to have a wedding feast for seven days. Bob's over here wiping his eyes. Just glad he didn't have daughters. <laughs> Had to feed everybody for seven days. No wonder he bargained off for eight cows, huh? <laughs> but that's the way it worked. And then at the end of the celebration, on the seventh day, or the last day of the celebration, that's when the wedding was actually consummated and you're married, you're together now. Now if you happen to be late, they locked the doors so you missed the wedding. They didn't have anybody coming in late for the weddings in those days. But let's look at Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. Now, this is a parable of the ten virgins and I think it does a pretty good job of explaining things, the importance of being ready. 
something that I think the churches are not. Starting in verse 25, it says, At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil and the jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the crowd rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come to me. Then all the virgins woke up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there will not be enough for both of us and to you. Instead, go to those who sell to them, buy some more for yourself. But while they were on their way by the well, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who already went in with them to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they cried, open the door for us. But he replied, to tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch. Because you don't know the day or the hour. Jesus is saying this right in the middle. He had to, he was teaching on the Mount of Olives. Okay? And if you want to look that up, and this is some good reading for you. Look at Matthew chapters 24 and 25. Jesus taught on the Mount of Olives. And that brought the whole deal from day one to the end. I'm coming back. And in the middle of this, he's trying to explain to the disciples the importance of being ready. Jesus called the church. He says, this is my bride. The church is my bride. Not the building. The people is the church. We call this the church just the building. The church is the people. And Jesus is talking about the future. He's talking about the things that's going to happen. Now here's something let's look at. We just talked about the Jewish wedding and how it all worked. Right? Jesus came to earth. He was betrothed to the church. He was promised as the bride. He was the promised bridegroom. The dowry became paid in full when he gave his life for the sin of man on the cross. And then he's going to return to collect his bride. We don't know when he's coming back, but we need to be ready. Ten of the bridesmaids Five of them came with what they needed. They came prepared to wait. I think that's what happens to a lot of the churches today. A lot of Christians. <clears throat> we waited and nothing happened. He said he was coming 2,000 years later and he's not How long did it take from the Garden of Eden till the time that he came? He was promised to Adam. It was over 4,000 years before he came to here to this earth to be betrothed to his bride, the church. But people get tired of waiting. What's the point? going to happen is be like the ten virgins. Five of them had to go get oil. They weren't ready. To be a lot of the church is not ready. We can't make a last minute preparation. Can you imagine If God told us that we were going to die tomorrow, what would we do? If you knew you was coming tomorrow, what would you do? Well, I'm going to apologize 
this general store because I owe them money and I'm not going to get to pay them. And, uh, well, I need to go tell all my friends goodbye. God don't work that way. God says, now, we got to be ready. We ought to have our life ready as a church. As Jesus walked through that door and hollered, Cliff! Can you hang on just a minute, Jesus? I got a couple things I need to do first. Ain't gonna work that way. When he says, Cliff, I better be on my way. Because I'm gonna get, get one invitation. And then the door's gonna get locked. And I'm gonna be like those five that didn't have enough oil for the lamps. You gotta be ready. We sat back. We talked about casual Christians last week. We got casual churches. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 and 27. This whole section here must be more than the books came out. But this whole section here talks about wives and husbands. But look at just 26 and 27. And let's listen back up to 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing her with water through the word, and to present herself, her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. And you know what? Let's back up to the wedding. Okay? We usually have the bride and groom. Everybody's up here to the front. How many have ever seen an ugly bride? They dress up their absolute best. Here's guys, once in their whole life, we've got to see them all. <coughs> Everybody is dressed up. We spend thousands of dollars on the wedding. You know, they get out here, $25,000, $30,000 for a wedding, and no, the preacher don't get 10%, by the way. But everybody dresses up. It's just for his again. <clears throat> That's the way new Christians do. That's the way the new church does. It's just pretty as they can be. And then what happens? Time passes and this beautiful picture of the wedding day Ugly brides, ugly grooms. Well, I've got my wife now. I don't have to shave anymore. I got a husband. I don't have to go my hair anymore. That's kind of the way the church is getting. Jesus came. He promised the Savior was in. I don't have to do nothing. He's done. says that the old ways are taken away and were made new. We ought to stay new. God's word promised us that. And if we stand on God's word and we live by God's word, we can always be new. We can't make last minute preparations. You know, most of the time we think of the bride as the woman. But men, when it comes to the bride of Christ, 
your pride too. You have the same responsibility as the women to keep beautiful for God. That don't mean clean shaven. That means living a Christ-like life. Here's the question for tonight. Are you presenting yourself as the bride of Christ in flip-flops and flannel pants? It's something we really need to think about. How are we presenting ourselves? If Jesus walked through that door right here tonight, Well, we're in church tonight. But what if he came through? What if he knocked on your door at the house on Monday or Tuesday? Would you have on flip flops and flannel pants? We got to be ready when he comes back for his church. The, the betrothal's already been taken care of. The dowry's already been paid. What's left is coming back after the bride. You're going to have an empty lamp. You're going to have a little extra to be paid. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for being with us. Father, for helping us. And Father, sometimes we stumble and it takes us a little time to pick ourselves back up. But Father, we just pray that you'll help us to, <coughs> to be dressed and, and prepared for your return. Father, let us not have an empty land. Father, let us not be in flip-flops and flannel pants. But, Father, that we're putting on our very best every minute of every day. Bless us now, Lord. And Father, help us this week to do the things that you would have us to do. Those things that are for your honor and glory. Father, help us to look forward to the day wedding celebration the day that Jesus comes back for his bride Jesus precious name we pray Amen